Hey everybody, Kat here. Today I'm going to be painting another Christmas card. It's going to be a winter landscape with a little rabbit in it. Um, it's pretty festive looking and it's going to a very special person who is 97 years old. Imagine that. Um, I start by taking some masking tape and tearing off each side so that they're not straight. Uh, it doesn't matter the shape, you decide how thin you want them, but I'm, I'm not being fussy. And I'm going to add, you'll see in a few minutes, I'm going to put three of these down. I only have two so far. And very lightly with a pencil, I'm just sketching out a triangular shape so that I know exactly where to put my masking fluid so that I can paint lights on. And this is uh, Dr. P.H. Martin's masking fluid. So far, I quite like it. Um, so I'm just going to dab those on. It comes with an applicator. And I'm just using that as the size. That's the size I chose for the lights. I'm not being too fussy about it. And as you can see, I added another masking. There's my third trunk. And with a credit card or a cut up gift card, I'm going to be scratching in some branches and, and um, uh, trunks, hopefully. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, so I wet my surface with the spray bottle and I'm going to be doing a vignette, which means you don't paint right to the edge of your paper. And these are the colors I chose. It looks like a lot, but even if I used a drop of the color, I, I added it to this list and I'm starting with this ultramarine blue for the sky. So just dab it into your, into your wet paint and let it do its own thing. Now this paper is Strathmore 500 series, which is hundred percent cotton. However, it's rather smooth for, and it's not, it doesn't behave like the more, um, the more well-known, um, <laughs> the more well-known, uh, hundred percent cotton watercolor paper. I think, you know what I mean? The more expensive and, but I do quite like it. You learn as you, as you paint and practice, you learn to adjust to each paper and sometimes so much so that when you do switch, even if it's to a higher quality, you have a little bit of a, of, um, of an adjustment period. So here I'm adding in some, I added some indigo and now green and some burnt sienna. Now the burnt sienna is just to represent some ground and, um, you know, maybe some fallen leaves or dead grass or whatever happens in the winter time. And I'm softening out the edges. I don't want any hard edges. And I'm banging down my board because I'm trying to encourage the paints to blend a little bit. Um, that's what this paper isn't great for. I find, I, I find the colors do not blend too well, but you can kind of coax them into, into going where you want them. So it works for me. And I'm just reinforcing the colors because watercolor does dry lighter. So it's a good idea to, to make them darker if you so choose. If you, if you want them to be more vibrant, then do add while the paper's still wet. And I'm painting right over this tree. And don't worry about that because I'm going to be removing with a tissue that paint. And that way when you make your branches, it looks more realistic. You know, if, you, if, you're, if your paint kind of slowly seeps into the middle of that tree. Uh, I, I had added a bit of gray color to there and I didn't like it. So I took it off. I didn't like the color I mixed. So we'll deal with that when it's dry. And there's my card that I cut different angles into to make different size, uh, trees and branches. And unfortunately I had something, I had to step away from the painting and it got a little too dry to use this method. So I ended up only scratching in. I, that was the only trunk really that I got in for a tree. The rest were just branches. I was scoring the paper. Use this card as a guideline though. You, I mean, you can use a cling wrap in the background. You can use some salt. 
you can use both. <laughs> you can do the scratching method with all three methods. You, you can just use your imagination or you can copy this exactly the same. You can do that. You're welcome to it. Um, just don't be limited necessarily by what I'm doing. Just sometimes you need an idea. Sometimes you need a guideline and um, have fun with it. That's the most important thing. Here I'm using the eradicator brush. It's soft and firm and I'm wetting it and rubbing gently back and forth and dabbing it off with my paper to remove some paint. Just add some interest to the background so it looks like sticks and branches and um, some paper, this paper is very fragile when you're doing that. You will get some pilling. Other papers will not. It's, they're very robust and you won't have a problem doing it. So if you're going to do a lot of this, then don't choose a, a fragile paper. So the Quinn Magenta I added to the Hooker's Green was to gray up the green a little bit, just so that the tree stood out a little bit from the green that's already in the background of the painting. And as you can see, I'm being very nonchalant. I'm just not being very careful. I'm just making some branches out to the side. And then I know branches don't grow just to the side. But when you're painting the first layer, they're all going to only look like they're growing out to the side from the middle. Then when you add your darks, that's when you're going to describe, so to speak, the branches that are growing out directly in front of us, directly towards us. And we have to leave this dry till we get when before we get to that stage. I don't recommend doing it too wet because it'll just bleed out and you'll have to do it over again. So for these birch trees, I'm wetting them quite well. This paper again, um, paint doesn't flow as well on this paper as other papers. And um, I am mixing up a gray, a brownie gray, with indigo and burnt sienna. So to make the striations on the birch tree, they are they have a special name. I will I will look it up again and, and put it. I'll add it in here. Um, the bark kind of has scoring in it, and in order to convey that the tree is round, the trunk is round. You will do them in a round fashion. So the first layer is just your. It's quite light. Excuse me, quite light gray, and we will embellish that later. We'll enhance the color later. I'm going to be doing the same with all three trunks. I'm just using a couple of different methods for each, simply so they look slightly different from each other, so they don't look exactly the same. So because the light, I've decided the light is coming from behind the trees to from the right. So all the darker shading is going to be on the left hand side of the trunks and in the front because the, the, the light is behind them. So that shadow right there is to tell the viewer exactly that. That's where the light is, is casting a shadow on the trunk. And I'm going beyond this vignette here. I just love when I see paintings like that. So I am adding some detail to the tree even beyond that skyline. I didn't want to, I didn't want to edit this part out because a lot of people have trouble doing this, but the, the best advice I can give you when you're doing this is not to be too uniform. Make sure your marks, you, like you're not evenly spaced and they're not all on one side. You just try to do it as casually as possible and your tree will look better for it and also stay around it. Try, to, try not to do anything straight across the tree because the trunks are round.
So I'm just adding a little bit in the back there too to give it some just so you know it's there that it's another that it's another birch off in the distance and not covering up all of your gray spots but adding a little bit darker gray to it will give these some definition and now it really does look more like a birch tree And using the side of my brush, I'm going from the side, swiping over the trunk just to give it some texture. So it picks up the tooth of the paper and it just gives the, the, the trunk a little more texture. And adding a shadow on the snow that the tree is casting I'm doing it I chose to do it in the ultramarine because at the gray I made earlier I didn't like it I, I, I found it looked a little bit dirty actually so just making some marks in the snow so you know the snow isn't perfectly flat and now with the hookers green and ultramarine blue I'm going in with my first layer of, of shadowing. So I'm going, when you add this, the idea is to give definition to this tree so that you can tell that there are deeper recessed parts of the tree and some that stick right out and the shadows underneath the branches that catch the light. And I'm not being ultra careful with this and I'll tell you why because later on I'm going to be adding snow to this tree and by adding snow to it all the snow would be captured on the branches that stick out the farthest so because of that I don't have to tell the viewer where every single branch is by adding in my darks, my darker values. I do it with the snow, actually. It's a little cheat. <laughs> now with, I mixed a black with the indigo and the burnt sienna, and I'm making new branches. Now, I believe they are usually quite dark, the new branches, because they, ha they don't have a lot of bark on them yet. And I find I like them because they show up and again I'm going out of the vignette I'm going past the skyline which looks interesting to me I like that and you can vary the the darks that you use you can you you can add a bit more burnt sienna and you're gonna get a brown you see I'm doing that right there and it adds interest to look at different colors and it's nothing is the same nothing is exactly the same in nature so be free you can even use unusual colors you don't have to stick to these earthy tones that i chose you can be daring and put in some purple branches or you know orange an orange ground or anything you like i'm just establishing establishing some shadows beneath these branches and with this brown I'm adding in some interest to the to the ground there like it could be sticks twigs dead grass um, it's just to give it a little bit of life and some movement give some interest to the painting I had a lot of fun making these cards and I decided to film all the different ones. I'll never film the same one twice, uh, but I did want to share them with you just to give you some ideas. And I have to do voiceovers because when I do them in the morning, um, I don't want to talk out loud. So this, that's why the, most of them are, are, are voiceovers. Now to, to draw this rabbit, it is not difficult. You take two egg shapes. So one is the face and one is the body. One's a small egg and one's a big egg. 
and then you put a tail on it and an ear and voila you have a bunny rabbit <laughs> so we're using raw sienna for the body and they will represent the lightest part that excuse me not they the color will represent the lightest parts of the rabbit and because it's so tiny when you start going in with your darker values you have to use a very small brush and some pretty thick paint because you do not want this to bleed because if it bleeds too much it's going to cover your entire rabbit all in one shot so i'm going underneath the ear underneath the jaw underneath the bum and the tail and what all the parts of the rabbit that are the farthest from the light that's what I'm doing first and because it's it's still wet it's softening those lines which is what I want so I even do the um, the hip the hip uh, I guess you would call it the leg so that you can see he's sitting and you know with very very little detail you I you know this is a rabbit looking up at the Christmas tree <laughs> So I dirtied up my raw sienna there just for the third value because we had the light and the dark and now I want to fill in with a richer color without completely covering the raw sienna. I'm leaving some of it uncovered for the highlights. And that's what we do in watercolor. We work from light to dark but sometimes establishing some of your darks early on help you to know how deep your other values can be. I hope that makes sense to you. So we're wetting, I took off the masking fluid and I'm wetting the, pretty much the entire tree, but mostly around those white dots. And I chose Windsor Red and I'm dabbing it in. It's fairly thick, the paint. It's like a cream consistency. And I'm dabbing it in the center and allowing it to fill the white space on its own. And uh, it gives a bit more of a natural look to it rather than painting these perfect little circles. And if you think you missed a spot or two, the red will cover that green. So you can add, you can add some in there. And I'm adding a shadow behind the rabbit. Can't forget that. As small as he in as he is, <laughs> or she. And I'm adding a few more darks now. Before I put the snow on, I just want to do this because as I said that white paint it's a bit of a cheat so I'm going to be establishing the parts of the branch that stand out the most with I'm going to establish that by putting snow on them so I'm just adding to my, my uh, darkening my values here so this is I would say this is my medium It's not too thick it's rather runny and as I'm not being very careful if if I wasn't doing if it wasn't a whimsical sort of painting I you would have to be a lot more careful about this step but in this case you don't and I'm just reinforcing some of that ground color so those blades of uh, sticks and blades and stuff don't don't stand out so much and I'm going to be putting snow down so I don't want to cover up the I would I do want some of the burnt sienna to show because I quite like it just making it look marbly and you know like it like it like a dirt uh, like a ground like the ground now I'm using a, an extremely gray watered down, excuse me, a watered down gray uh, here so that it's light and a soft brush. And I'm adding it to the trees because I found they looked a little too stark. And by doing this, it 
doesn't only give them some color, but it gives them a little bit more definition. So they look more round and less perfect. You can do this also with some uh, burnt sienna, very pale burnt sienna or browns. Now for the snow, I put a glint in the rabbit's eye and some on the branches that uh, that are that we painted and the rest mostly the attention is on the tree the rest can be very done with you can spray them on or drop them on but the snow i, I mean but the the tree is the one that you will need most of your attention And as you'll see, as you add the white, it'll give the impression that there's a branch sticking out from there, even though you didn't paint one in. This was a fun part. I, I like this. I kind of lost myself in this part of the painting. I was very relaxed and and uh, as you can see it makes the tree three-dimensional once you're adding those lights Let's see it really brings it to life and it makes it look so festive the snow so now I just have to do the background which we we all know the trouble I have uh, splashing white paint I end up getting it all over my workspace <laughs> and none on the painting <laughs> so this time I'm trying uh, a skewer, a little mini, a, few, a fruit skewer it's called. And uh, I had some luck with it. And then I go in manually and adding my own little blobs. <laughs> and that poor rabbit got covered. So I'm just dabbing that paint up. And when it's dry, I will paint over my rabbit because he just looks like somebody hit him with a really big snowball. <laughs> And these are backwards circular motion that I'm doing with my brush, adding some white paint. And uh, just for some interest. And the the what I did on the brown part of the ground there to the left, I don't like it. So I'm going to go in with my eradicator brush again, very loosely take it off and then paint over it. It's not that I don't want snow there, it's that I didn't like the brush strokes that, that were left, so I'll we, I will be using a different brush to fix that up after. And I have to fix this bunny. He's the most important part. Him and the Christmas tree are the most impart, important part of the painting because it's Christmas and um, I, I just love this little this little rabbit. <laughs> I just think he's cute. You can paint a bird if you like. Uh, cardinals are Christmassy, chickadees. Um, you can paint a fox, uh, a deer. If you're brave enough to paint a deer, paint a deer. And I'm just redefining all the darks that I lost when I, when I splattered the white paint on them. Yeah, that's what I lost was the definition. And I'm manually going in with, with a thin, a thin, the tip of my thin brush with some white paint on it, just to make some bigger snowflakes. And to make it look like it's sitting on top of, say, a, a, a dead plant or bush or a shrub. Or... And this last part all looks very fussy, but these are the tiny little details of a painting that you think don't get noticed but it finishes the painting it's the difference between an okay painting and a really good one now right after i do this i go in with a stenciling brush which is kind of flat and bristly and i wet it with some uh, white paint and I just dab it in the background on the ground and it's just so it's not so dark 
And I, and I quite like that better than what I had. So I really hope you enjoyed this painting. I hope you give it a try. If you do, let me know. Leave me a comment. And uh, please give me a like and subscribe to my channel. I would love to hear from you. Happy watercoloring. Bye-bye.